And we're live. Happy Wednesday. How's it going, guys? Um, we're gonna do a test run with some audio. Yeah, in a couple minutes here, because we have some actual 911 call footage that we have to get to you. And I was reading through you guys while you were waiting for this to start. You guys are so nice. Someone's like, you can't figure out what to have for dinner. Someone's like, I'm having blue cheese burgers with Brussels sprouts. Ooh, that sounds great. You're just helping each other. So how's it going, guys? Um, okay, so this is, let me just confirm that we're live. This is um, a live stream that's not about keto at all. Mm -hmm. We always say this, but I feel like we have to. It's about crime. We eat keto, keto foods though, and in the beginning and during both of our cases, and then at the end, we do answer some keto questions if you have them. But okay. yeah, mostly we eat our food and we talk, oh, we talk about the true crime cases we've researched. Okay, looks like it's working, we're good to go. Hi from Upper Michigan. I'm eating a, a T-bone steak with turmeric. Nice. <laughs> good work over there. Chicken pizza. So for dinner, I have salmon. Mega cooked it. Yeah. I got two pieces. How many ounces is it? They're like five and a half each. About, so like 11 ounces. Yeah. Then we got mushrooms over here. A good bit of mushrooms, some bacon. What else? Uh, fat. And then I sprinkled pumpkin oh. seeds. We've, been, we've sprouted a bunch of pumpkin seeds and I've been going through these. I want to sprinkle a little on mine. Um, I love them. So I sprinkled them on everything. So yeah. And then I have my Topo Chico, which I love. And then I got some pickles that I might munch on. And I'm thinking maybe for dessert, I'll have a little of this cereal. Cause cereal is actually a dessert. We just eat it in America for breakfast. But this is like some low carb cereal mega ordered. Mm -hmm. It's it's called uh, Nuco Coconut Crunch. It's from our last vlog too, I talk about it. And I got some butter that I might put on my mushrooms. We're gonna get so many questions about that cereal. I and bet. a Zevia. It's really expensive. It's like $10 per box. Yeah. Super expensive, but delicious. Okay, so I'm going to really quickly do an audio play test. something for you, and I want to know if the audio works. Let me know if you can hear the audio from the this video I'm about to play. Did that work for anyone? No. No. <laughs> no Someone audio. said yes, but they're just lying. Okay. 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 Dang it. How do we do this? So we're going to have to play a 911 call from... My phone. Mega's phone. Thanks, okay. guys, for letting us know. And is this is this a speaker? This so is the play? mic, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have two cases today. I got to get through some of my dinner first. They're two of the most requested and just like super famous ones. Not this one. Was more Brandon sure. Lawson? It's famous, but it's it very wasn't. famous. Okay, it wasn't requested though. No, it actually it was requested by one person, but um, Elisa Lamb is like everyone just wants to hear. So finally, Matt's doing so it. So I'm doing it. It's not really my favorite case. This one I'm doing purely for y'all. I don't. I think it's like an open and shut type of case, but it's very creepy Cryptic. and mysterious. The yeah. video. Mm -hmm. Um, should I practice playing my phone something so they can hear it if it's like good audio? Or should we It'll be good. It'll be good, okay. That's the only way we can really do it. Josh Peoples, thank you for the donation. Oh my god, hello. This is the first time I've gotten on here live. I've been stalking your videos and blog and podcasts for a few weeks. Oh. I'm new to keto and you guys are inspirational and hilarious. Thank you. We appreciate Hopefully it. Hopefully you came for some crime though. <laughs> um, yeah, it. this one is not too much about keto, although in like intermission, We'll have uh, some keto chat. Mm -hmm. We're eating mushroom salmon. We got some pickles on deck just because I like pickles to munch on. I'm going to put some butter on my mushrooms maybe for dessert. Potentially this cereal. We'll see how I feel. It's a low carb cereal. We got it's bacon in the mushrooms, pumpkin seeds too. It's like essentially just like coconut flakes mm -hmm. really. Just received your cookbook yesterday. Have you looked into the smiley face killer? Yeah. Um, it was kind of connected to my 411 missing cases. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that was one of the theories, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the eighth episode. We've been doing this for a month, two months now. Wow. How many times a day do you guys say keto? Not often. It'd be cool to have like a counter. But we don't really say it to each other, right? I don't know if there'd be a reason to do so. It comes up in conversation, like occasionally. I guess, oh, we say it in like lives. We and say stuff. keto connect all the time. Oh. Or we just say KC actually. We never really say keto connect. Mm. What's the ideal macro for a one meal a day? It's highly personal to you, so. Yeah. Oh. It's gonna be hard to like get in 2,300 calories, I would say, for most people, right? I can do it. Okay. Fear like, man. This meal right here for me is maybe like. It's going to be over a thousand for sure. Yeah. But I usually have two meals of a little over a thousand calories. How is Kitty? She's actually eating right now. She's doing well. She's taking she's her meds well. down like a champ. Love these true crime. I'm now addicted to all the true crime channels. <laughs> Do we get so addiction, addicted. Do we have a fireplace? Yeah, we do, but we don't know how to use it. Well, we don't have, the gas valve is turned on when we bought the house. Uh, it was off and they like built over it. So we have to find someone to like find it so they can turn it on. Can you do convenience store keto? Yeah, we should do that soon actually, because that is, that comes up pretty often. If you're doing like a road trip, you just need to get stuff from the gas station. Usually what I get is like, hard -boiled they'll, they'll have hard boiled eggs sometimes. They'll have string cheese. Beef jerky. Rarely, they'll have, they won't really have beef jerky, but they'll maybe have like uh, like a Slim Jim type of thing, a better quality Slim Jim. They usually have beef jerky, or they have like local beef jerky if you're driving through the West. I the mean, beef jerky usually has carbs though, a lot of carbs. What'd you say? Like I've, six or eight. Pork rinds, if you, if you live in like the South. Yeah. I know California's probably not gonna have pork rinds. If you're really lucky, they'll have one of those like protein pack things. Mm-hmm which is nuts, um, cheese, meat. What else is in it? Oh yeah, some kind of meat. Y'all cookbook arrived today. Oh, yeah. that's great. Raw honey okay on keto? We haven't actually tested that. We plan to though. What, raw honey? Yeah. I would say probably not. But supposedly it is, right? Mm. It's like raw milk. The theory is more of the, the digestive enzymes will be present in the raw form of the food. So I think if you do raw honey versus refined honey, the raw honey will have less of an impact, but it, should, it shouldn't be great for keto because it is mostly just sugar. Mm -hmm. Do you want to start? Sure. How many times do you say erythritol per day? Maybe just one or two, <laughs> not too much. <laughs> Making your sticky sesame chicken for dinner tonight? That is amazing. Um, oh yeah, Callie would have cracklins. I don't know why I thought. Callie? Yeah. Maybe like Southern Cali would, but like SF, I don't, I've never seen pork rinds in SF. That one company, the 4509 or whatever, that's from SF. Oh, you're right. I've actually eaten there. Have you? Yeah. Oh. I went there for my graduation dinner with my family. Was it good? It was actually really good. Yeah, the barbecue. Okay. Mm. Are you drinking with dinner? What? Oh. I have one of these, but I drink a lot of water already today, so <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to have it. It's a carbonated uh, Topo Chico lime. You don't know if you're going to have the Zevia? Oh, this is a, yeah, it's a Stevia sweetened soda. It's called Zevia. Aura rings. Yeah, we have the Aura rings now too. We like them. They're just fun to compare and like, the main thing is it helps you figure out what helps you sleep well. Yeah. Okay. Should I start? Yes. One more bite. Do you guys drink kombucha? I do once in a while. Maybe like once every two weeks I'll have a little. Okay. Don't you think the rings are kind of BS? Oh, the aura rings? Um, I don't know. I've been reading a lot about it and like the articles and stuff. It would be cool to get, I don't remember his name, but the CEO on, he's um Yeah, he Indian. does podcast interviews. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know enough about, I mean, it tracks your heart rate variability. But yeah, like how accurately is it telling like your if you're in REM sleep? And I think it can tell your temperature pretty easily probably. But like mm -hmm. your deep sleep and stuff, that I'm maybe a little skeptical of. But I would like to ask him how it does it. But then I don't know if he'd tell us because it's probably like a proprietary thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to start. So I'm doing the disappearance of Brandon Lawson, very famous or pop, like well known as Matt Sab. Happened in 2013, so also really recent. Um, and I'm bummed we can't play the audio for you guys. Hopefully, you guys can hear it through my phone. They'll be able to. Okay, but that we can like discuss and see what people have to say. <clears throat> um, okay, so Brandon Lawson was 26 at the time. He was an oil field worker and he was the father to four young kids with his girlfriend, Ledessa, when he went missing. So on August 8, 2013, after returning home from being out all day, um, that... Mm, Same wife for all the kids? Yeah. So after being out all girlfriend. day, his girlfriend, also the mother of all four kids that they've had together, they got in a really big fight, like super severe. Um, and we don't know the exact details of the fight, but it said that the fight was about him potentially relapsing because he, he used to be addicted to drugs, meth in particular. And so relapsing, partying, and okay. all, all the stress of having four young kids, right? That's a big piece right there, though. Yeah, huge piece. So, Potential relapse. So they get in this fight. Brandon grabs his keys, wallet, cell phone, wall charger, and decides to leave home Sorry, at approximately 11.53 p.m. that night. Although being low on gas, he called his father asking if he could stay with his dad for the night. And his dad said, okay. And his dad, something to notice, his dad lived three hours away. So that's a long ways away. So you're going to get there at 3 a.m. Right. Um, seven minutes after leaving, Ladessa calls Brandon and she tells him not to go to his dad's and like maybe just cool off, drive around, and then stay with his brother, Kyle, who only lives five minutes away. And he you know, decides he agrees. And the way we know that is because he turns around. We have um, GPS tracking? No, um, but there is a map that shows like the way he was coming, the way his car was parked. You can tell he turned around okay. on that street um, and he's heading back in the direction of where they lived. Then 10 minutes later, Ladessa calls Kyle, Brandon's younger brother, and she just expresses concern that, you know, she's not, she's worried about Brandon. So Kyle goes over to Ladessa and Brandon's house to check on the kids, make sure everything's okay. And then he heads back home. Everything's fine. Okay. So the girlfriend is pretty like stressed about his state, it seems. Yeah. So that's where like the relapse stress comes from. Yeah. It makes okay. sense. 1234. So this is what, like 36 What time did later? he get off work? He was just out all day and night. We don't know when he got off work. He got home at 11. He was out doing what? We don't know. She thought he was at a party. I just said that, remember? Okay. Um, so 12.34 p.m., Brandon calls Ladessa twice, but she misses both calls. And she misses so many calls throughout the night, this would kill me as his girlfriend. Like, I would hold it against myself for the rest of my life. So she misses those first two calls. Four minutes later, 12.38, Brandon calls his brother Kyle and tells him that his truck ran out of gas on Highway 272 near Bront, Texas, Bronte, Texas, and he needs assistance. A few minutes later, Kyle calls Ladessa, the girlfriend, to tell her about the situation unfolding. She answers? Yeah, she picks up to Kyle. She, maybe she was mad, so maybe that's why she missed the calls now, I'm thinking. So she, she tells Kyle she'll leave a gas can on the front porch for him to pick up because she was gonna go let her phone charge in the car. Like her house charger didn't work, so she needed to charge the car um, phone with the car charger, and she wanted to take a bath and go to bed. So. I'm learning a lot about the girlfriend's lifestyle here. What do you mean? I know people who do that. Do you? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like people who can buy another charger immediately. 12.45, Kyle and Audrey, Kyle's girlfriend, drive over to retrieve the gas can from Brandon's house, but can't fill it up since Kyle's check hasn't like come through. His paycheck hasn't come through, so he can't pay for the gas. So they decide they'll drive out to Brandon, they'll pick up Brandon, he'll drive to the gas station with them, and he'll pay for the gas. So okay. that makes sense, right? And how far is Brandon's car location from like all their houses? Um, just far. like, no, just like 10, I'm gonna say like 10 minutes up the road, like not too far at all. Okay. 
from what it seemed. Okay. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know the exact. Um, so 12.48 a.m., Brandon attempts to call Ledessa for a third time. No response. 12.54, Brandon calls 911, and there is a call recording, and I'm going to play it for you guys. So some said, some have said that it's been altered because in the beginning you hear the word staber, which could be the word state trooper pushed together to say staber. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's one example of the alteration. So let's listen to it, and then we can unfold it. It sounds to me like the girlfriend is not answering her phone out of spite. Yeah, she's, she's mad. She's answering from other people. And she left the can outside. If she was worried, she would go with him, right? Yeah. Okay. And let us know how the audio is if we need to, like, fix it somehow. There's a three-year-old currently missing in Florida. I haven't heard about that one. But, yeah, it would be cool to do more... I guess this one is pretty recent, but like more breaking cases that just happened. Yeah. Okay, videos. You sent it to me in Slack. Oh, I did. Okay. Whew. Got some technical difficulty here. We're pulling up the audio. So this is a 911 call from Brandon. So he's a. 2013. Zero, fifty, and thirty-eight seconds. Nine-one-one emergency. Yeah, I'm in the middle of the field. It's like we're just pushing guys over. Right here going towards gasoline on both sides. My truck ran out of gas. There's one car here. You got to check the woods. Three turns. Okay, now run that by me. Mean, we're not talking to him. Hi, so you ran into him. Ah, uh, you ran into him. Okay. Got the first guy. Do you need an ambulance? No, I need the cops. Okay. Is anybody hurt? Hello? That's it. So he doesn't need an ambulance. He needs the cops. It says he ran into someone. So, yeah. So there is a lot of ways this can be taken. Let me, should I pull up what it actually yeah. says and then I can... And he's speaking very, like, southern, like, slang English, it sounds like. Right? And, like, he's obviously frantic. He's out of breath. He's panicked. That's he what does, it He like. doesn't sound too panicked. He doesn't sound like life-threatening scenario. It sounds like he's running. Does it? Yeah. He says something about the forest. He's, head, he's in the woods. Okay. 911 emergency. What's your emergency? Yes, I'm in the middle of a field. Uh, right here, um, so this, they all are very different. Um, so he says he's in the middle of a field, and this is not the best one, sorry. We're looking for a transcript. Yeah. This should have been done in, done in pr preparation for this. So every so the transcript is different on every account when you go and try to read it everywhere. So that's why listening yeah. to it over and over to really see what you hear for yourself is the best. And I think the one I played for you is the best. And the one I played for you was we only played half of it. So it goes in later. It like it zooms into certain aspects of it, like the audio, and you can hear. Apparently, you can hear gunshots. Uh -huh. Three gunshots. You can That's, hear. No, I've listened to the call a lot of times. It's definitely not for sure gunshots. Some people say there's gunshots, though. So. And then you can the also end. hear another man say, "Protect yourself." Really? Yeah. Play we, it again. Well, should I just play like yeah. the slowed down version for you guys? Hello. Hello. This is a slowed down version. You ran into him, okay. That's the first guy. Do you need an ambulance? Ah, uh, you ran into him, okay. That's the first guy. Did you hear that? Do you need an ambulance? What is that? There's a second person, and he's saying, protect yourself. I mean, if you listen to it close enough in your headphones. Ah, uh, you ran into him, okay. That's the first guy. Did you hear it? Do you need an ambulance? No. There's a second person though? Yeah. 
Ah, oh, you ran into him. Okay. That's the first dog. Do you need an amulet? Yeah. I did hear him say protect yourself right at the start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if he's saying protect yourself, but there's definitely a, there's a two second voices. Dude. There's two voices. And if one's on the phone, the other one's with him, I don't know. It seems like something's going on, right? Yeah. Um, and then you guys can listen to it on your own to see if like you feel like it's gunshots. At first, I didn't think it was gunshots at all. But like if you really try and break down what he's saying on the phone, um, it sounds there's a couple ways you can interpret it. Either like he just... He like ran into them, so like not literally ran into them with their car, but like he came upon something he shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have seen, right? He shouldn't have been there, and now he's being chased. Now he's being like attacked, or it sounds like he came upon some state troopers and they were arresting other guys. So he ran off into the woods because he has a, a warrant out for him. That's a big part oh, of it. Oh, he has a warrant. Okay. Yeah. So he ran off into the field, and he's like, they got the first guy. And then, another, so like, it's, it could be like taken either way, right? Okay, so maybe. He ran into the cops by out. accident because he starts walking, right? His car stops, he gets out, he's walking down the street. How do we know that? Well, that's what we're assuming. What I'm assuming is if his car stopped, he thinks there's a high chance the state troopers or someone comes by and he can't like, yeah. risk that. So he just has to. Like a DUI type scenario. But then, so that, that to me has made a lot of sense, but then why is he calling 911 unless the cops are doing something shady? And this is a small rural town. Like, it's not like, you know, I don't know. Things happen, cops aren't the, the With best. With no evidence though, I'm not just gonna assume the cops are doing crazy. Like, I just thought it was an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Cause there's reason for him to be hiding from the cops. They got the first guy. I'm not assuming there's just killers out there hunting men and they got the first guy, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't even know what the first guy means. Like, why would there be two guys? Well, that's, I mean, there's multiple guys. So that's what we're assuming. Like him and two other guys, maybe, or multiple other guys, they got in some kind of trouble. He came upon it. He ran into it. And now he's trying to run away. Some other guy escaped. The other guys, the other guy got shot. They got the first guy. This sounds very far fetched to me. What do you think happened? What is this call around about? I don't know. All I know is he ran out of gas on the side of the road. You'd have to listen to the call on your own, right? Yeah. To like fully get a picture of it. I feel I've like listened you... to it a couple times though. But not recent enough. Okay. I think. Okay. So, Continue on. So um, is he being chased? Who did he run into? Is it cops? Is it random? So like there's so many questions out there as to this call. Okay. So four minutes after the call, a passing truck notices Brandon's car and calls it in um because it's like kind of obstructing the road and this prompts deputy neil to head out to the truck and check out what's going on and as kyle and audrey at the same time are approaching brandon's car so is deputy neil from the other side so remember kyle and audrey are coming to brandon to bring the gas can to pick him up to get gas for him mm -hmm. so at the time um at this time kyle was pulling up he was also a parent. So all, a lot of this is also like hearsay. It's word of mouth. So Kyle, I read a couple different resources and Kyle says that he was on the phone at the time with Brandon when he was pulling up and Brandon says, I can see you. I'm right here. But yeah, so, so why would he be calling the cops on the cops? That's, that's what I literally, yeah, I said oh, that. Okay. Someone said that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, it, it sounded interesting. And then I really thought about it. I was like, it doesn't make sense that he called 911 if he's scared of the cops. So, yeah, to me, calling 911 So means... what's happening? He's obviously being chased or attacked or something's going on, right? We can if talk about theories If you have a warrant later. out for your arrest and you're calling 911, to me, that means something, something serious. Something serious, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we just, we have to... Something serious is going on. Exactly. Um, so Kyle was on the phone and Brandon says, I can see you. I'm right here. Um, and this is what... Wait, Ky now Kyle's on the phone with who? Brandon. After the 911 call? Yeah, but Brandon, Kyle doesn't know Brandon called 911. No one does. Okay, Except so it definitely was not Brandon getting shot at that time then, for sure. Whatever the gunshots were, if there yeah, were yeah. gunshots. Okay. Yeah, we're not assuming he was shot. Okay, okay. Um, so, Kyle, uh, and this is what Kyle said. This is Kyle's account. So okay. we're just trusting him because he's his brother. But So Kyle said that... Brandon could see him, but he couldn't see his brother anywhere. And so Kyle's assuming 
that Brandon was just hiding from the deputy because he didn't want to be arrested. So no. he's like in the bushes. Maybe he can see Kyle. He can also see that deputy's there. So he's staying out. What's the weather this night? Do we know? Is it? Um, it was a August in Texas? West, West Texas. So warm. It was a drought. So it was like very dry, like okay. super dry. Um, and then at 118, Brandon calls Audrey. So this is after Deputy Neal and Kyle meet up at the car and Deputy Neal, um, he like searches the car and nothing's too weird about it. So he tells Kyle, he's like, if the car's not gone by 8 a.m. in the morning, I'm gonna have it towed. So Kyle's like, yeah, it's just my brother. He ran out of gas, he'll be back shortly. So they just talk and it's totally normal. And then at 118, Brandon calls Audrey, Kyle's girlfriend, and states that he is bleeding. They, so they begin, what? Okay, so Brandon is alive at 118 now. Yeah. And the 911 calls at what time? It was at 1254. Okay, so about a half hour later, he's still alive. Yeah. He says he's bleeding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's out in like the woods, West Texas. He could have cut himself, brushed, like we're not, he, that's all he says, right? I'm bleeding. We don't know what, is, what it is. Exactly. I would assume he's bleeding from whatever's happened to him, though. Yeah, maybe. Not just brush. So, Brand, um, Kyle and Audrey start searching for him until about 3 a.m. when they realize that Brandon's phone is either off or dead because it only goes to voicemail at this point. Like, there's no ringing. So, they end the search at 3 a.m. They leave the gas container in Brandon's truck, and Kyle calls Ladessa to tell her about Brandon's location. But she doesn't get the messages until 4.30 in the morning because her phone's still charging in the car. So at 4.30, she goes to retrieve her phone and um, she hears the voicemail and she sees all the missed calls from Brandon. So she panics, calls the police at 5 a.m. Why are you reading my notes? I just have thoughts in my head, keep going. She calls the police and to see if there's any updates have been made, but nothing. So two hours later at 7 a.m., Kyle's paycheck finally comes through. He returns to Brandon to fill up the gas, but still Brandon's not back. And that's really all of it. 8 a.m. the car is towed. Okay. So they stay up till 3 a.m. looking for Brandon. Yeah. To me, that means- They're they, worried about him. They know, maybe know more than they're letting on. Like maybe they know more about the situation. Well, if no, you think, if you got a call from your sister, she, her car ran out of gas, she was bleeding and you could easily get to her. And she sounded frantic on the phone. She was calling him multiple times. Wouldn't you be worried and stay out looking for her? Yeah, probably. And then he left the gas in the trunk because he he thought the true situation was he just needed to get yeah, gas. Yeah, so if Brandon came back, he could walk to the gas station, say, okay. use the gas container. Someone asking why we think there's multiple people there. We listened to the 911 call, and I think you can hear the voice of a second person. And even so, if you can't, um, Brandon says... They just, they got the other guy. Like he, Brandon, it seems like Brandon can see. There's definitely some kind of scene going on, right? Two cars, I would imagine. But yeah, because no, Brandon never... says there's another car. So this had to be seen. They're on the side of a highway, right? Was... Yeah. Okay. And then no, another... it was very desolate. Like desolate? you could lay on the ground and no one would run over you for hours. Okay. Okay. So no one, no eyewitnesses to like two cars on the side of the road? No. Just that one truck that called in Brandon's car, but he wasn't there at the time. He was still midfield or wherever in the woods. Someone's saying the girlfriend's in on it. I don't, I don't I'm think not so. completely discounting that theory, but seems far-fetched. They have four kids together. They were oh. happy, they're high school sweethearts. So two days later on August 11th, 2013, a small search of four hours is conducted, no sight of Brandon. And with the lack of pivotal updates, the consensus among Texas Rangers was that Brandon, if alive, is no longer in Cope County. He basically- He fled? He decided he wanted to start over. He hitched a ride from someone else. Um, and that's what they believe. The following day on August 12th, Ledessa was able to retrieve Brandon's phone records. So this is two days later. No, okay. this is three days later. While she's combing through them, she realizes that there was a 911 call placed from his phone. Mm -hmm. So no one, the police, no one informs them that he called 911. I don't know if that's like protocol. Would you tell the family that he did that and like re release? I don't know. Personally. Yeah, you would. Okay. So I also think like in really small counties, they don't like know what the rules even are. I feel like they just kind of like make them up as they go. They probably weren't trying to be Maybe they were though, like they were Cover withholding up. information. 
Well, it depends what it has to do with. But yeah, I don't think they were either. I think it's more likely they're just incompetent. But she, either way, she's really upset that they withheld this information. One week after his disappearance, they do an official search using infrared lights, helicopters, dogs, the whole nine. Nothing's found. And then a second search conducted two weeks after that, and they covered 2,500 acres. But once again, nothing was discovered. And if they covered that much ground and he just like died of, you know, like the weather or like drown, you would assume they would find him. Um, right? Because they covered that much ground and they, they used helicopters, they used like infrared and everything. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, that either lends to the fact that he just left or that he was killed by someone and then his body won't be found. Because there's a lot of private land there. And a lot of the, a lot of the people are, are not allowing the cops to like come and search and seize the house, right? Naturally. So that's just something to consider. So things going for him at the time, like why would he leave? So the big things are he was about to start a job the following week with more money and better benefits. So that's a big part, right? Yeah. That's exciting. That's good for the family. And he has four young kids. Like he loved them. There was no reason that he would, you know, okay. want to stop and leave. So what was his prior addiction? Meth. Okay. So that's one of the theories. We so if theories. we're thinking at all, it sounds like he had some kind of relapse, right? So to me, when you relapse, that's really the driving force in your life. So he's just thinking about getting more meth. So meth is a lot. You get you get a lot of hallucinations. Okay. So that's one of the so one of the theories is the relapse on meth caused causing these hallucinations about everything about being chased about reasons for hiding in the bush from the cops if that was true um, when he saw his brother and Deputy Neal just about everything like and I read a lot of stories where people you know are close to others or know of others who were addicted to meth and they think everyone's out to kill them and they it's like pretty serious so that that's like I would say the leading theory people thought about his drugs and hallucination also Another theory is that Brandon... In, in the first theory, though, how does he end up dying? We don't know. Okay. Because I don't see any... Like, they would have found his body. If he yeah. just died out like there. Like, some kind of overdose, but that seems unlikely. Yeah. Um, Brandon no longer in Coke County. Wait, maybe he was going to pick up drugs. And he had some kind of existing issue or like long history and with an altercation yeah. and they killed him. Then another theory is that Brandon is no longer in Coke County. So he hitched a ride out of town due to his pending warrant for arrest and due to the severity of his fight with his girlfriend. Um, so what that speaks one doesn't to this, make sense. what speaks to this is that he's missing for five years with no trace. And I mean, like, if you're missing for five years and you haven't been found, you know, people, it's easy to think like you just you up and vanished. You wanted to be gone, right? Brandon also cashed his 401k. Well, wait, he could have just like, you know, the meth really taken hold of him. He's like, I don't care about my family. I don't care about my kids. I want to just get away from all this. I don't want the new job. I want to go just sure. do Yeah, more. that's possible. Brandon cashed his 401k with the renegade oil services his job just before he went missing okay but, but we don't know if he got the money he uh. started the process but it's not for sure he got the money because he never even like he doesn't touch his bank account after that night nothing of that he sort cashed in his 401k that's and then, not something you do like just willy-nilly he started the process well, he was changing jobs. Maybe you do. No, I don't know. no, no, no. You still don't cash it in. But we don't know in. if he got the money. Okay. That's and then, suspicious. But this is suspicious. The major paper in town that reported that he was just no longer in Coke County, that he hitched a ride and bounced, um, the owner of that major paper, the one who reported this, is the wife of the sheriff. So she has ties to the police. So and she's she gonna, said, what did she say? That he... She said a lot of things, like he was only 100 yards away from his car, when in fact his phone pinged three miles away from his car. We know that for a fact. Oh, you didn't tell us that. Yeah, I know. I'm just remembering. Okay. And So how was he three... Well, the phone... How often are the phone poles? You know, like... Yeah, and he might have not had his phone. He might have been away from his phone, right? Further away from his phone. Okay. So she said he was 100 yards away, and he wanted to just up and start a new life. But she's also tied to the police... And she wants to protect her husband, right? 
Yeah. That's a big motivation. Um, the brother Kyle did it. That's pretty iffy, but it's a theory. And he took polygraph tests and he passed both of them. The brother did it as a theory? Yeah. Because it, it, it's led to believe like Brandon didn't, or Kyle didn't search hard enough. When you find out your brother's bleeding and he's panicked and he's, you know, he's out there in the wilderness, you're going to no. do more than... I don't think Kyle did it. Oh, yeah, of course. I don't either. Um, he's killed by someone he ran into when his truck broke down. Um, and this is, this is also hearsay, but Kyle said that when he was leaving, when he was driving, he said that he was being followed. But that's, this could have been hallucinations also. Like, was he actually being followed from some the Mexicans in the neighborhood? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then he just di died in the wilderness, drowned in a river, and it took his body away. Is there a river? Yeah, nearby. A big one? Like a deep? Yeah. It's deep enough to drown? Yeah. Okay. I mean... I'm so going to eat up my food. Yeah. If you think of a scenario where he dies and his body is never found again, I think that might be the most likely one. Like, yeah. ac accidental death on meth, and then... Body. I don't like, even know if I, he relapsed on drugs, but he could have definitely, if he was, he might have also been being chased. The thing is, his girlfriend for sure knows if he did or not relapse. Yeah, but she's definitely not going to say. And I, the vibe I'm getting from like her not answering her phone and stuff is that he did. Yeah, she was really mad. Yeah. Someone, Geronimo, $5 donation, longtime viewer too. Do you to know what your attachment styles, secure or insecure, are and how it affects your relationship? Att no. Attachment styles. I need to look into that. What is attachment styles? Is this that book that I was reading? I'm pretty sure I do know. I took a test. Should I look up attachment styles real quick here? Mm. So do you guys got theories? What's your theory, Mega, on the... In the case. Oh yeah, I read an entire book on this. It was one of my favorites at the time. Attachment styles? Mm hmm How do you determine which you are? You, you just... take tests and you read about the traits you have when it comes to certain situations. I'm, I feel like Matt's is secure and I'm uh, anxious, preoccupied maybe, but I haven't looked at it in a while. Uh, dismissive, avoidant. So there's Secure, and then there's three subcategories of insecure, it looks like. Anxious slash preoccupied, dismissive slash avoidant. Oh, I think I'm dismissive avoidant, actually. And fearful slash avoidant. Maybe I'm secure now, though. When I read it and I like was theorizing about who I am, I hadn't even met Matt. I was 22 at the time, and I was just... It's hard to really figure out what you are. Um, if you're not in like a stable relationship and you don't know how you respond, like I was boyfriendless at the time and I was just like, who am I? You know? Okay. I'll pull up the chat. Yeah. So what do you guys got for theories on this? I think I'm definitely thinking some kind of relapse and then either a run in with drug dealers or like some kind of drug friend that he had a debt with just, you know, like getting back into the drug world since yeah. he just relapsed. Or an accidental death. Cashed out and took off. Yeah, that's probably my second favorite theory. We don't know. He definitely got his money, though. But It's the love language book, someone said. Yeah, that's what it is. What happened to the car after it was towed? Did he get processed for evidence and stuff? Mm -mm. No. Yeah, drug deal gone wrong. Yeah, I would hope not, though. How many of you are familiar with this case about a Lisa Lamb? This is kind of a similar, yeah, similar thread, for sure. Mm -hmm. Meth OD and scavenger animals. Scavenger animals take quite a... Do they? Maybe they don't take very long. Two days? They would have found him, his remains in two days. Yeah. A dog would have sniffed him out. Yeah. The cashing out of the 401k thing is weird to me, though. I've never had one. So I don't know. The thing is, you don't really, like, 
think about like I'm gonna cash out my 401k so I can do more meth. I think doing meth is like a very spontaneous thing. Isn't cashing out your 401k a long process too? Yeah. So maybe I don't know. Was he just like sick of his life? That's I guess one other. Homebody's Adventures. Thank you for the donation. Maybe he wanted his 401k for meth. Yeah, but if he just relapsed that day, <laughs> he wouldn't have been like thinking. Or maybe he didn't just relapse that day. Maybe it's been like a few days, a week, month. Yeah. I mean, his wife says it wasn't the case at all. Someone said wild hogs. Are they prominent in West Texas like that? Yeah. They eat the teeth too, don't they? Do they, they eat your body though? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they do. Mafia. They feed you to the pigs. To the fish. To the pigs. Well, the saying is... I know, but in real life... Because pigs eat everything. Yeah. Have you seen Snatch, the movie? Yeah, of course. You have? Yeah. Oh. Okay. The cereal is good. If your kids know no sadness, they do not grow right. What is, is that pertinent to the case? No, but it's just an expression. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. I like that. Do you don't know sadness, I would say. Do you don't think I know sadness? I don't know. You've not shared with me. Yeah, because I keep things to myself. Okay, here we go. The mysterious disappearance of Elisa Lamb. This is a very famous case, and I don't really like it that much, but so many people requested it that I thought it's due time. So, Elisa Lamb is a young, youngster. How old? Her parents, I, I didn't look up exactly how old she is. Early 20s. Mm -hmm. Her parents are natives from China. They immigrated to Canada. She's a first generation Canadian. Um, she is going to a school in British Columbia and she's doing like a trip to California by herself to the US. So the timeline is actually relatively brief in this whole story. It's mostly just about looking at the footage. There's video footage talking about the toxicology report and just kind of coming up with some theories. So she's traveling on the west coast of the united states she also writes a blog it's kind of like a hobby i don't think she's doing it really full time or anything but she writes in a blog and she goes to stay at the cecil hotel mm. is that where black dahlia was one yeah time? i don't know much about the black dahlia thing at all i need to look into that one still so the the cecil hotel that she's staying at has a long history actually and that's why there's some conspiracy theories about this did she know yeah, I think she was staying there for that reason. Oh my god, ew. Yeah. So, the first documented suicide at the Cecil Hotel was reported in 1931. Um, someone died in their room after taking poison capsules. And then throughout the 40s and 50s, just more and more suicides occurred. And then in the 60s, the residents began to call it the suicide. And this is the type of hotel where people actually stayed at like long term. Like if you've seen Boardwalk Empire or whatever, you know, there's like he just lives in a hotel basically. Yeah. So there's stuff like that. It's it's pretty diverse, like the way that people live there. Some people just stay for the night. And then there's also multi person rooms, which is what Alisa was staying in. We'll get to that. What does that mean? More people more than one person in a room, just like random Oh. Yeah. Was she, like, not able to afford her own room? Yeah. Or she was, probably, but she was just trying to save money. So, in 1947, Elizabeth Short, which is the person who's in the Black Dahlia thing. I don't know anything about that, so I might sound dumb about this. Um, but she was spotted drinking at the bar at the hotel days before the unsolved murder. <clears throat> And it was also home to multiple serial killers. Richard Ramirez, the biggest one. Wow. So a lot of crazy stuff going on there. That, but like, so do they know this at the time? Yeah. But like, it's not currently home to multiple serial killers. No. Okay. 
And, you know, it probably attracted people because of its reputation. Why are people attracted to that kind of stuff, you know? I don't know, yeah. It's creepy. So, January 31st, 2013. Alisa is spotted by a hotel worker at the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. So, this is the actual last in-person spotting of her. And worth noting, the Cecil Hotel is by Skid Row, which is like there's a lot of drug use, homeless people. I've never been to Skid Row. I don't know anything like it, but I've been to the Tenderloin in San Francisco, and I would imagine it's close, probably even worse. worse. Yeah. yeah. Which is just, you know, really a bad area. She was assigned to a shared room. So this is kind of like a hostel type of setup where I think there was like up to five people in a single room. It was probably like a bigger room. Yeah. But she was reported by multiple roommates for odd behavior. Weird. So she ended up getting a room of her own because of that after a few nights. Okay. And very important to this case is she has a long history of diagnosed, clinically diagnosed mental illness. Bi bipolar disorder is the, the one she was mainly diagnosed with and she was on medication for. Okay. And she actually writes about this in her blog too. Okay. That's huge. Yeah. So... Start of February, Elisa is supposed to check out of the hotel, but she never checks out, and police are notified. Wait, how long is she there for? I don't know exactly, like at least four or five days. Okay. I don't know when she got there, but she stayed there for a few days. Okay. Yeah. Um, February 6th, so this is about a week later. Everyone, police release details about the suspicious disappearance of a missing Vancouver woman, Elisa. Okay. Or maybe it's Alyssa. Is it Elisa? Alyssa Lamb? I Alyssa, think it's Alyssa. Alyssa Lamb. Alyssa Lamb. The next day, police hold a press conference about the disappearance. One week after that, now February 14th, a solid two weeks since her disappearance, the police released a two-minute surveillance video of Elisa, who seemed to be acting unusual. And this is like one of uh, just a super popular, like famous video, one of the weirdest videos you'll ever see, which we are going to show you here soon. And then about a week after that, there's a bunch of complaints about low water pressure in the hotel, and like the water tastes weird and just. A bunch of issues with the water. Yeah. So the police, or not, not the police, a, a worker, a hotel worker, finally checks the water tank on the roof of the hotel, and Elisa's body is found inside of it. I just, I don't understand why she chose to stay there, knowing the reputation and knowing what kind of people stay there. Unless there was, like, reason for her to, like... It's like a tourist attraction type of thing, I think. Yeah, but, like, a lot of, like... I'm sure poor people, drug addicts, right? It's like a hostel. It's not like, it's not just, we wouldn't go ever stay there. I don't think it's just people. Some people like to do stuff like that. I wouldn't like but it. But like, no. the first, now I'm thinking, I haven't thought about this, but like maybe it was, she wanted to be off her meds and that was the place to be. Definitely a theory. Yeah. And she's just tired. Cause you, you get numb, right? From those kinds of meds. Like you don't feel anything. Yeah, but she wasn't really like the drug taking type. Maybe she wa didn't want to take her meds, or maybe she, she didn't take, take them meds. all the time. But I don't know if she would go there to do that. Well, to just be with her people, right? Like other mentally ill people. But they're drug addicts mostly. She's not really a drug addict. She just has a mental illness, but she's like living a normal life. Yeah, maybe. Okay, go cool. That's the thing. She's living like a pretty normal life. She's just definitely dealing with mental issues. Okay, so, the video. Ooh, get ready, guys. So this is a four-minute video. We'll pause and give, like, one sec. Let me you see. guys can see it, right? No, not yet. Oh, never mind. One sec. Okay. Can you see it? Someone say, yeah. I think that should be working. Yeah, that works, right? No one's saying yes. Okay, so there's no audio, I don't think. It's just... There is no audio, yeah. Yeah, they can see it. Okay, elevator. This is the elevator. You just oh. started it at the end. I started it at the end. Oops. 
Okay, elevator. And another thing to note about this is there is there should be, you know, it's a hotel, tons of cameras. This is the only one that's working at the time. It's a shitty hotel. There's not going to be tons of cameras at a shitty drug addict's hotel. Here we go. It's probably also cheap rooms. So door opens. Now, diagnose her mental state walking in here. No, people don't usually bend over like that. People do not bend over. People don't do... Like, I can see when you're by yeah. yourself, maybe you just do some dumb stuff once in a while. I do that. Yeah. Like, I'll talk to myself. I'll but do it just, some dumb stuff. But it just adds up way too much with the fact that she's bipolar. And but, like, yeah, going around like this and then immediately bending down. That's yeah. That's weird behavior to me already right away. Yeah. And then she hits every elevator button. Seems like... Pretty normal. No, that's not normal for a lap. Like, but like you pressed all the elevator buttons, something's not right. The door's not closing. Now what's that? Maybe I don't know. Is it haunted there? Maybe she like uh, being off her meds. The hallucinations plus like maybe it's actually haunted. Like why isn't the door closing? That's a good question. That's she pushed all the buttons. Know. One. So she could be doing that to try to trigger the door. Of the elevator. But she, the way she did it was weird. She looked at yeah, both, sides she looked both sides and jumped back in. Clearly like mental, some kind of hallucinations. One other theory is like there's someone else that is n nearby or like hospital or hotel guests. Maybe holding the button to keep the door open? Maybe. Yeah. Hmm, maybe. Okay. So she did one check. Now this is She's like scared. Super She's weird. like hiding from someone, right? Scared, yeah. Someone or a hallucination of some kind. She's is she peeking even around the corner or is she just standing there weirdly? I don't know. Very abnormal behavior. It looks like she's playing with someone. Yeah. Yeah, she's, it's obviously, she's obviously, um, Okay, so the, the most weird part is coming up here. She doesn't seem a bright mind whatsoever. Pretty soon. Still standing there. She's like scratching her head. So like maybe there could be someone else there. So this is when... She re-pushes the buttons. Yeah, pushes them all multiple She's times. Geronimo Venti, thank you for the donation. See like this bending down here? That's weird behavior to me already. <laughs> you just quoted me. What is she just like? She's. It looks like she's just... Oh, there's the light goes off? Is what that, light? The elevator button lights, are they going off? And then she's pressing them again? No, I think they stayed lit. Okay, so this is where she does like really crazy hand movements. You see that? She's like paddling, yeah. That's like not something anyone ever does. That's almost like some possessed like demon type stuff. Yeah. Someone just said push the door close button. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she might have tried that. And then she just walks off. Yeah. Do we know if the video has been edited? I don't. I think we're pretty confident it hasn't just because of the, the, the runtime in the bottom. Yeah. But you know, like there's looks, always. It looks like she was petting something too, right? Like. Yeah, but like just the angle she was like doing was yeah. really weird. It's creepy. So all that happens at the end here, there's another minute. Basically, like pretty soon here, I'm fast forwarding, the door shuts. Does it just go to all the floors and open? Yeah. And you can tell it's going to different floors because of the wallpaper. What do you mean? Oh. The different wallpaper, different tile. So it's definitely going to different floors and it just keeps doing that. So the button lights are going off. Yeah. So that's the, the video. And then while we're here, I guess I can show you these other photos. So here is the water tower that she's found in. And 
you can see, so there's like, you have to climb up and you enter from the top and this door is like pretty heavy. It's like, I don't know, like, I think some people have said like 40, 60 pounds, something like that, like a pretty heavy door. On top, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is what it looks like, just like a real view of it. Damn. How did she get up there? And she's small, like to open that? Yeah, that's the thing. So there's a lot. Unless someone helped her? Another Maybe thing. Maybe she like gave someone money to help her? Maybe, but I have a different theories on that. Okay. Another thing worth noting is that her clothes were found in the water tank, but not on her. So she like took them off. She took them off. But she thought she was swimming in a pool. But would she take them off and then throw her clothes into the water? She you... didn't take them off in there. <coughs> she like got in the tank, took her clothes off. She got in the tank inside in the water and took them off while she was under in the water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably what I would think happened too. Um, okay, so that's the video. Any thoughts on it? A lot of people saying drugs. She wouldn't be able to lift that on her own. Why didn't it close when she was in it? It's probably like not an auto, I mean, it's just, it's heavy. You gotta open and close it. There's debate on whether the worker found the thing closed or it was open. The prevailing thought is that it was closed and maybe it can only be open from the outside. But how far um, away is it when you're in the water? Like, I don't know. could she even reach it from the water? Maybe not. Once she jumped I think it in. was three fourths of the way filled. But like it's hard to reach up when you're in water and if you can't touch the bottom and push pounds. something up. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. And there was a toxicology report. Okay. This is crucial and it's been like heavily But has it it's been two weeks, right? It's been two weeks in the water, and the thing about that is you should they took blood from her heart. And when your body's in water, it's like the blood's perfectly fine. No, wow. no degrading in toxicology whatsoever. Okay. So very confident in the test. What the test shows is Elisa, Elisa, Elisa was on a number of drugs, uh, like not recreational. Her medics. Her actual drugs. Yeah. It's actually a lack thereof is what is worth noting here. So... What you can take away from the toxicology report. I just looked up someone translating all this because it's really hard to, to understand. Alyssa took at least one antidepressant the day of her death, which was her dosage. She had taken her second antidepressant and mood stabler recently, but not that same day. She had not taken her antipsychotic drug recently. Okay. She had no alcohol or common illegal drugs in her system. Okay, so she wasn't on her meds. She, the only one she was not on was the antipsychotic. Which is the one that has the most antidepressants not going to control yeah. your symptoms. So I don't know. I didn't know all of this. But it, apparently if you're taking the drug she was taking without the antipsychotic, it can have like manic episodes. It's a very strong... Also, when you're on a high dose of something and you just stop it suddenly, depending on... How, like you have withdrawal symptoms. That too. So like you relapse even harder, I would imagine. Some people theorize that it could have been a date rape drug, something like that. But the lack of alcohol means that it's very unlikely that it was that unless they administered it to her in some like out of the box way. But like her movements and everything in the elevator and her actions speak more to just the fact that she wasn't on her meds and maybe some manic episode, I would say. There's a very strong risk of mania associated with taking antidepressants alone, not in conjunction with an antipsychotic or mood stabilizer, if you have bipolar disorder. Okay. So that is, that's from like some medical authority. You just have to take my word for that. Can you say, um, can you tell, someone said did she drown? Because the autopsy could tell that, right? Yeah, she drowned. She did? Mm -hmm. That's so sad. Obviously that makes sense. So some that's pretty much the so story. How long do you think she was alive in the tank? Not long, probably. You don't think so? Maybe like a couple of days, right? Screaming for help? No. I don't think that long. Do you drown if you can't swim? You don't just keep swimming? I could stay alive in water for a long time, probably. But she was in like a manic state. Yeah, I guess that's true. 
But like you could stay in live and like people stay alive in the ocean for like days. Yeah. Okay. I think you could probably. You just keep like hovering. Yeah. Okay. Um, all the hotel, hotel employees and the book shopkeeper who saw her that day were interviewed and they all confirmed Elisa was alone. No other party Friends at all. Okay. Yeah. And they could, any evidence of sexual assault someone asked? There was no rape kit performed. Hmm. But that was just because it didn't seem likely, and they don't just like do that for for no reason. And it was two weeks, so I don't know if you you can even do it. Yeah. So, so how long do you think you can tread in water? I don't know. Well, I, you wouldn't be treading. You'd probably need to float. You just lay on your back and float, exactly. But I've done treading water. I think for like. It's hard. Like forty minutes. We had tests in swimming and stuff. We did. I don't think I could pull forty minutes off. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, a couple of the primary symptoms of mania include physical restlessness, which that kind of seemed like was going on, strong desire to increase activity, and an unrealistic belief in your abilities. Okay, so wanting to get in the tank, wanting to go for a yeah. swim, thinking you can get out. And so what was reported is that there's only one way to get to the roof and it's always locked. But, you know, this hotel, they don't really, they don't take the security seriously. So it may have been unlocked. But there's also, it later became found out that there's like an unmanned fire escape. She could have easily gotten up. A lot of people are talking about how gross it is that she was in the water tank and people drank it. People drank the water, yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Fingerprints on the door. I don't know. If, I assume they checked that, but I don't know. I don't think it was murder or suicide. I think it was an accident. Theories. The hotel is haunted. I, I, I'm a big believer in ghosts. People probably think I'm crazy after the 411 thing. And I'm crazier. Yeah, so the first theory is that I don't really put much weight in is like haunted, paranormal type of stuff. So I do. I'm heavily into that. But it seems like... It's weird that the elevator didn't shut, I guess. And she was, like, peeking around the corner, like, yeah. as if someone was there. And then when she gets out, she walks away. The elevator shuts fine. It acts normal. Like, obviously something's going on there. Yeah. I don't think so, though. I think it's probably just in her head. What do you mean? It's not in her head. It's on the video. We saw it. Yeah, but... Why wasn't the door shutting? She pressed all the buttons. It worked fine. Huh? Maybe that just like threw the elevator off for a while because it's so old. She hit all the buttons. No, as soon as she left, it started working. Yeah, it's weird. If you can't explain it, something else is going on behind the scenes. There's one really out there theory. I didn't write it down, but I can kind of remember it. It's basically like, apparently there's a treatment for tuberculosis and it's called Lam Alyssa. Like oh, Lam I read that dash one. Alyssa. And apparently one theory, this is just like super conspiracy. Alyssa Lamb wasn't even a person, never existed. This was just all like a cover up uh -huh. for uh, the government using Skid Row as like a test ground for tuberculosis treatments. They just like give, gave all of them tuberculosis on purpose. Yeah. Which I don't think that happened, but. I remember reading that. That is fascinating that's though. That's one theory. That it, it falls in line like that. Murder is another theory i would say that one's pretty far-fetched i think paranormal is even higher of a chance than murder yeah me too are you just messing with me no okay. and then the most likely scenario is she killed herself and then there's two subsets to this accidental death and suicide i would have to say i'm not going with suicide accidental death absolutely accidental um why is the door not closing? Yeah, I guess we'll never know. Worked in a psych hospital, used to see behavior all the time. This behavior, especially when patients were having hallucinations, very sad to watch. Yeah, it definitely falls in line with a manic episode, which is like, when you're in that state, like she seemed far gone enough where she's not thinking suicide, right? Like, you're, she's not depressed, she's having an episode. Yeah, I think when you're so, like, engaged in something like that, suicide doesn't really cross your mind. I don't yeah. know, though. But I've heard, like, people tell firsthand accounts of their manic episodes, and I guess it's hard to really 
think back to when your mind was working like that, but it sounds like they're very like engaged. They believe everything that's going on. I've listened to a stand-up comedian, actually. I forget his name. He tells like a 40-minute story about his crazy three-week manic episode he had. And it's pretty interesting and mm-hmm. like funny. He makes it funny. I thought it was more like, you know how when you have a seizure, you don't remember it even happened. You wake up, you're like, oh, what's going on? I thought manic episodes were like that. You kind of just like wake up yeah, out of them. I th- oh. And you don't even know you had the manic episode. Maybe, yeah. But no, I mean, it makes sense that you would know they occurred. Because you're not like unconscious. You're conscious. Because you're when you're seizing, what? Someone said Ted Bundy tape starts tomorrow on Netflix. Oh, what a handsome serial killer. Yeah, his story is pretty I always talk about how attractive he is. Just yeah. like, that's not the point. But He's sure. known as like a, the most the attractive. Hottie. Yeah. And then one last Hail Mary thought is... That the hotel guests were tormenting her, the same ones maybe they reported her to the front office. Yeah. And then maybe they were like around the corner, that type of thing. But I, I think it's probably. And then they killed just, her and threw her in the tank? Yeah. Or maybe that could have led her to her own death. Someone said, oh no, we remember our manic episodes. That's interesting to know. If she wasn't hallucinating and actually scared, I feel like she would have been more panicked and wouldn't have hung around the elevator. Yeah, she's clearly like hiding from something, like stepping around the corner, like she squished into the corner. It's like she's playing with a child almost. Yeah. A child ghost that was killed there. This is all I can think. Um, people have to realize all of the detail that all of the details of how, why, and when she died are stemming from someone who is totally out of reality and reason. If your brain is not functioning, all that seems explainable. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has to just be accidental death. That's. She did look up. She didn't look afraid. No. She looked like as if she was engaging. At some point, she looked a little afraid. But, yeah, she looked kind of, like, playful. Um, it's crazy how much her state changed throughout, like, the two minutes in the elevator, though. Because she walked in, she, like, would seem kind of happy when she was, like, bending down. Pripping. She was a little kid. She, like, went to, like, a mind state of, like, yeah. a seven-year-old. And she was like, yay! Yeah. That's what it seemed like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then she was like... like let's see what happens when we push them all. Yeah, Julius, he's just licking my arm. Um, have you seen Shane Dawson's video on this? No, we haven't. Nope. Pushing all the bus buttons made the elevator sense there wasn't enough weight for that and basically canceled the request. I don't, I don't know. think the elevator I've, senses all that. I've gone into an elevator and pushed a bunch of buttons... And it just takes it all the floors. Does the elevator, especially this old-fashioned elevator, I don't think it has... It has, like, sensors. Sensors like that. It kind of just goes. That's LSD for you? I think LSD is a commonly tested for drug. She wouldn't have any. She didn't have any drugs or alcohol in her system, right? She was tested for most common recreational drugs. I feel like LSD is in that category. I don't know for sure, though. I, I don't know. Can psychedelic drugs, drugs be detected? Maybe not. I think, I think, is it LSD is like three days? Or is that cocaine? I don't know. I know weed's 30, cocaine is three days. But, um. I don't know LSD. Yeah, I don't know. I think your case is more interesting for sure. Maybe she was on ketone esters. <laughs> Great comment. We really did some good acting in that video, didn't we? Great comments, Celine. Why did she decide to stay in that hotel? Why isn't it still shut down? Yeah, I don't understand from the get-go why she decided to stay in that hotel. I feel like she wanted to be in a place where she could be comfortable just being off her meds. Maybe she wanted to try it out. Maybe she, like, was tired of being on meds. People go, like, right? Like, it's exhausting being on medications. I've never been on psychotic ones, but I've been on, like, medications where it takes toll on your body. Yeah. And, like, you want to just be off them for a little? Is that possible? I don't know. I can't really I, put myself in that situation. I would yeah. imagine when you're taking a drug every day and you're, like... It works? You just stick to it? No, I imagine you're... it Because most people say, like, it makes them feel... No. Like, disconnected and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe a lot of you or some of you have experience. Maybe she didn't know the hotel history is just cheap. Yeah, she was from Canada. 
Maybe you shouldn't know. That's pretty much it, though, guys. Yeah, this was fun. Um, are we doing one next week? We might not do one next week. The 30th, we'll be here. We'll be here? Okay. We're leaving the 31st. This might be in crunch time with some stuff. We're working on our second cookbook right now. We have about a week left. <laughs> yeah. We're winding down here. Um, what else you got? Nothing else. Some meds are really strong. Yeah. What'd you guys have for dinner tonight? Dr. Berg should do a video on LSD. <laughs> That'd be funny. That would be funny. Where's Julius? Oh, he's right here. He's just resting. Show him. I would love for him to just do some, because he has such a dry sense of humor. If he just did some crazy videos, but didn't like make it obvious that it was a joke and just ended the video. Yeah, just keto and LSD. But I guess there's people that also just listen to him and they're like, oh, Dr. Berg says LSD is good. Call up the LSD guy and get, get the LSD. Um, you know? She might have been on the wrong cocktail. No alcohol in her system from the autopsy report. Greek salad and keto Alfredo chicken. Yum. Quest nacho cheese nachos. Yum. Someone said Dr. Berg should do a video on LSD. Oh, I get it. That's funny. <laughs> you guys are pretty funny tonight. Yeah. Not a ton of questions about low carb barbecue sauce. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cordon, Cordon Bleu baked chicken with Brussels sprouts. Yeah. A lot of people doing Brussels sprouts tonight. Yeah. Butter steak and beef butt steak and butter. What's beef butt steak? I don't think I've had that beef really. Butt? I've heard pork butt. Parmesan bacon, Brussels sprouts. Mahi What's the barbecue sauce you use? <laughs> um, G uses my fave. <laughs> Julius is just licking my arm up a oh, storm. Oh, I love when he just licks me for no Matt reason. Matt loves to be licked. Um, what kind of dog is Julius? He's a Yorkie mix. Matt's um, convinced he's a Westie. I think he is. I've been looking at he pictures. He looks a little like a Westie, but I don't think he is a Westie. I think he is. Let us know what you guys think. We've been watching like a lot of dog. We watched yesterday this documentary on people that do cat shows. Super good. It made me want to get a bunch of cats. Yeah. Like some actual bread, like purebred cats. Because Miley's just like a gross runty runt. Congested woman. <laughs> is she still sleeping over there? No. no. Um... Guy... Yairo, how do you say that word? Gyro? Ya Euro? Euro loaf in the oven. Mm, is that ours? I don't know. If somebody was outside pushing the button, it would stop the elevator door from closing, and then she peeked out to the person, then got out to argue with them. Yeah, that was my thought, but like... That's one theory. The way she was arguing with her hands was very just abnormal as well. But the person, I feel like, would have been on video at some point. And then, like, what's the person doing when she does the crazy hand thing? She is just like he's still just holding the button. He's just laughing at her. And he's still holding the button. Yeah, I don't know. Did Miley have the surgery? Yeah, she's recovering pretty well. She is. No. Oh, next case. Do we have one planned? No. But if you guys comment once this video gets posted, just comment on it with some suggestions. We usually look through those. Westies and Yorkies are the same dog. Yorkies have the white bread out. Oh, is that true? I don't know. Maybe a Westie is a type of a Yorkie, as you're saying? I thought they're both terriers, but maybe they look very similar, too. Yeah. All right, guys. This was fun. It's been real. We'll see you in the morning if you join us for Instagram Live. Have a beautiful Wednesday.